Hey all, Lara here with Witchy Wednesday, your weekly astrology report for this time for the week of October 24th to the 30th, 2018. And the big news that I'm going to talk about mostly in this video is the full moon that's happening in Taurus on the 24th. So I'm going to get to the details in a minute and uh, of course going to go through all the signs and talk about, you know, the, the impact in the area of life this is... Uh, affecting you. But before I do that, I just want to say, um, as always, thank you so much, you know, for your participation here and uh, for subscribing, for liking the videos, for reaching out with questions and comments and all of that. I so, so appreciate it. And, um, you know, of course, you know how to reach me. Um, if you want to get a personal reading or you want to just get in contact, you can do that through my website and the link is below. So, also, I want to let you know that I'm recording this early because by the time you're watching this video, my family and I will be in Boston, um, which I'm super excited about. We're just having a little getaway and um, it's a place that we've all wanted to go for whatever reason and it, the opportunity arose. So, you know, we decided to go for it and we're going to be in Salem as well, at least for a day, maybe two. I'm hoping to. But, um, so. Um, you know, I was going somewhere with that story and now I can't remember because I'm just so excited. Why am I telling you that? Aside from the fact that, oh, I know why. <laughs> I'm, um, while I'm there, I will, you know, post stuff on Instagram and Facebook. So if you're interested in following along and uh, want to see some pics of Salem and Boston and see what's going on there, then, then follow along on Instagram and uh, Facebook if you haven't yet and the links to those will be below too. So all right let's get on with talking about this full moon. Um, the moon enters Taurus on Wednesday so that's I believe the actual day yeah of the full moon on Wednesday the 24th and the day before that the sun has entered Scorpio right I mentioned that in last week's video where I also talked about Uranus and Taurus um, squaring the nodes which is a an energy that's with us for the next till early November and so if you haven't seen that video then go back and watch it because it's still relevant but um so we have this full moon in Taurus on the 24th and after that, the moon will move into Gemini on Friday, Cancer on Sunday, and then Leo on Tuesday. But this full moon is happening at one degree of Taurus. And so it is in a conjunction with Uranus that's in Taurus right now. So they are right close together, coming together, a blending of those energies, right? And so this is adding this element of sort of uncertainty or surprise or... Um, you know, the unexpected kind of thing to, to this full moon. And the moon and Uranus are opposing the sun, which is now in Scorpio. And so this altogether, it can bring about some, some plot twists, right? Tension, plot twists, um, even excitement, opportunity, impulsiveness. But there are some other things going on that I'll talk to you about in a minute, but I just want to remind you that a full moon is always when the sun and the moon are opposite each other in the sky. And it's a time of culmination, of coming to fruition, of shining the light, you know, something being illuminated at that time, of, um, of closure as well, or a turning point in some way, right? And this full moon in Taurus is related because astrology is cyclical right to the new moon that happened in Taurus in May of this year and so you know all the signs sort of get one new moon and one full moon every every year sometimes two but that's it depends that's rare um, and so if you think back to May of this year and what was going on for you at that time then this full moon that was sort of the the seeding of that or the beginning of it 
And now this full moon is, it's reaching a culmination point of some sort or some sort of closure or turning point, as I said. Um, so, and I'm going to speak to whatever area of life that's happening for you in, in, in a minute here. So what else do I want to say about that? Okay. So the full moon, regardless of what sign is happening in, there's always this overarching theme of, um, balancing or, um, compromise this desire for the blending of like masculine and feminine energies, right? Because the moon is a feminine energy, more receptive, and the sun is a more masculine energy, more, more sort of directive, right? Um, projective. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a tickle in my throat. So, so that's like an overarching theme or energy of a full moon. Specifically, this full moon is happening in the sign of Taurus. And so it will involve something surrounding, you know, the material world, our material possessions, our, um, our money, our self-worth, um, our... What else? Um, even our secu like our need for security, right? Taurus is a fixed earth sign and, and really doesn't love change. Um, and because of that and Uranus's involvement here, we may have a hard time sort of uh, releasing whatever it is that wants to, to, to be released right now. We may have a bit of a, an emotional attachment to it, right? Um, and, you know, that's okay, but, but just be aware that whatever wants to change right now is for the best. So the moon is our emotions, largely, and it's our, our inner security needs. Um, and even fears sometimes. And Uranus can be erratic. So we may experience some erratic emotions around this time, right? Or we may experience some emotional breakthroughs as well because Uranus can bring that about. Um, also at the time of this full moon, the moon is opposing Venus because Venus is in Scorpio with the sun. And so this kind of points to perhaps some level of uh, tension or need for balance or, or um, compromise in in our relationships um or other venusian related things you know um earthly pleasures and our money even um our worth that kind of thing and then the good news is not that that's necessarily bad news anything i've said to you so far but but Saturn is lending support here. So if something comes up or we're feeling a bit surprised or caught off guard or, um, you know, uncertain, that kind of thing, rather than kind of flying off the handle or being emotionally erratic, harness the energies of Saturn who wants to support us right now. Saturn is... Um, sextiling the sun and Venus. So that's a conversation of opportunity there. And um, also trining the moon. So with these aspects, Saturn's lending its support here, helping us to find some, some solid, self-loving, um, mutually beneficial, you know, sustainable, grounded, mature kind of solutions and outcomes. What uh, to whatever transpires, right? Whatever we're working through or whatever comes up for us. And, and also allows us to have some patience and, um, stabilize our emotions, right? So that's all, all good stuff. Um, the other thing I want to mention before I go through the signs is that on Tuesday, the 30th, so the latter part of this 
you know, what I call the week because I do these reports Wednesday to Wednesday. Um, so through Tuesday night and into Wednesday, which is Halloween, that'll be the next Witchy Wednesday, Halloween edition. Um, Mercury is shifting signs. So Mercury, the planet of our intellect and our thinking and our communication, the messenger God, is shifting signs from Scorpio into Sagittarius. That will lighten things up for us um, in terms of those particular energies. So with this shift, you know, we'll take all this information that we gathered when we were, um, you know, when Mercury was in Scorpio and plumbing the depths of everything and, and use it to perhaps shift our perspective or to um, broaden our horizons or to maybe persuade others or teach others. Um, with the with Mercury in Sagittarius, we're likely to feel a bit more optimistic um, or our thoughts and communications may be a bit more optimistic and we may have a bit more um, just faith, you know, faith that everything will be okay and everything will work out. And that's awesome. Uh, it's a very, Mercury in Sagittarius, is a, it's, a, it's a bird's eye view. It's a very big picture and an energy, right? Looking at the big picture. And so the only thing I would say is that if you have, you just be mindful um, of not losing the details of anything important when you're, when you're, you know, communicating, um, speaking, writing, you know, that kind of thing, or just your general sort of thinking about things. Make sure that you're not completely, uh, <coughs> excuse me, just, you know, only looking at the big picture that's great. Some people don't have the capacity to look at the big picture. And so, um, that can be, that can be difficult, right? And so this, this is great for, for, for that kind of thing. You know, if you're somebody who generally struggles with that, then this may be a helpful time for you as far as that's concerned. So the full moon through the signs. First, I'm going to show you the chart and then I'm going to, uh, to speak to that. So here's the chart for uh, October 24th. All right, so we've got the sun now in Scorpio along with Venus, Mercury, Jupiter, still all the Scorpionic energy, right? But, but Mercury is going to move uh, later this week into Sagittarius. Um, and then we've got, let's see here. There is Uranus in Taurus, right beside the moon there in Taurus, right? So that will be the full moon. So the moon will be opposite the sun in Scorpio. And then you can see these conversations. These green lines are those um, opportunistic conversations or easy flowing conversations happening between Saturn, right? Saturn and Venus and the sun and then Saturn and um, it's... Uh, also, sex dialing um, the moon, right? So that's the blue line there. So that's the chart. And I just want to remind you before I go through the signs that, again, there's a relationship between this full moon, whatever's culminating, being illuminated, coming to fruition. Um, reaching a turning point, you know, all, all of that. And what happened at the new moon in May of this year. So whatever sort of first began around that time, right? Overall, as I mentioned, there'll be some degree of focus on, on the material world, on earthly pleasures, on emotional attachments, even um, love and money, you know, and, and, likely some kind of changes or plot twists. Um, you know, there's that, I think, Facebook meme that it talks about, you know, life's going along and then, you know, somebody screams plot twist. It, it may be a little bit like that. Um, but also potentially excitement, opportunity, unpredictability. Also, the one thing I didn't say um, yet is that this full moon might reveal to you what's missing or what you feel moon is our feelings what you feel is is missing 
in a particular area of life. And, uh, you know, so again, with the Saturn energy supporting this, a patient, mature, grounded, you know, sort of responsible, practical, long range view, right? Um, that's the way to approach, approach anything that comes up. So I'm going to start with Taurus. Because Taurus, this is happening in your first house, right? And so the first house, Taurus, is the house of the self and of your physical vitality and your physical appearance even. Um, it's the house of how you come across to the world and how you approach the world as well. So you might be feeling your emotions and your physical body a lot these days, Taurus. And, um, you know, particularly if you're feeling any kind of resentment over um, relationship or money issues, uh, you know, that might come up for you now and you may be feeling that physically. Um, but you have a chance to sort of reinvent yourself, right? And, or that may have already started, that may have begun around May. And now you're looking back and, and seeing, you know, this is a time of uh, culmination, like maybe now it's time to kind of, you know, show yourself to the world sort of thing, the new you to the world. Um, or maybe some kind of you know, sort of psychosomatic issues that, that arose in the spring in terms of your emotions presenting physical ailments, you may be reaching a culmination or maybe getting some closure there, or getting some answers or, um, you know, that being, that being highlighted in some way for you around the time of the full moon. So that's for you, Taurus. And, and, you know, this is, Taurus rising, Taurus sun, Taurus moon. Um, the rising sign, if you know it, is always the first one I would listen to. And if you don't know it, there are places online you can draw up your own chart. And um, if, you know, if you're interested in that, or of course, if you have a, a personal reading, then that's always a way to do that as well. Um, okay, moving on to Aries. Aries, this is happening in your second house of your resources, what you value. Um, including yourself, right? Your self-worth, your money and possessions, that kind of thing, material possessions, right? And so you might be called at this time to look at that area of life and particularly with regards to your emotional relationship, right? With money and resources and, and values and that kind of thing. And this may have begun in, in May, around the time of the new moon. You know, so are there ways that you have been trying to or you can have a more grounded, practical, um, sort of even-keeled approach in that area? Are there opportunities for collaboration here? Um, or is some collaboration in terms of this area of resources and money and, and self-worth and all of that uh, coming to culmination or fruition or closure, closure right now. Um, there might also even be, you know, like a lucky break in terms of your finances or your resources or in, in your, how you value yourself, you know, breakthroughs in, in, in your self-worth kind of thing may even arise right now. So that's for you, Aries. And I'm going to move on to, um, who am I going to move on to? To Pisces. Sorry. <laughs> um, Pisces, this is happening in your third house. I'm going in order of the houses, right? So Pisces, that's the house of your communications and your thoughts. And, you know, your, your immediate environment as well, right? Like where you kind of exist on the day to day or what you, you know, your your neighborhood, your, that, that kind of thing. Um, your peers, your siblings and short distance travel or commute as well falls in this third house area. And so this full moon is a time to perhaps use your voice and speak up, right? Or speak out. 
um, you know, it, it can be a time of having your say, and maybe it's having your say around something that began around the time of the new moon in May, and you haven't said much about it. And, you know, not everybody is a mind reader like you, Pisces. <laughs> so, so you may, um, you have an opportunity, you know, to, to, to kind of get out of your head at this time and, um, Maybe be involved in some kind of deep transformative communication or dialogue with siblings, with peers, with people in your community. Um, you know, maybe you're looking at writing something very introspective right now and out of the ordinary and, you know, wise, but you're going to put it out there. Um Maybe that's something that began in the spring and now it's time to release it kind of thing. So, you know, just in general, some communication related issues that arose or began in the spring may, you know, get some closure now um, or reach a turning point. So that's for you, Pisces. Aquarius, this is happening in your your fourth house, which is the house that has to do with your your home, um, even your your place of living, your um your ancestry, your emotional security. It can have to do with real estate even as well, right? So does this fourth house area, these things I just mentioned, need a little attention in TLC right now? Um, you know, maybe you began <coughs> something like for example, maybe in May you started hunting for a new place to live. And um, at this time of the full moon, you're going to reach a culmination point. Maybe you're going to find a place and maybe it's not the place you expected kind of thing. Um, again, it doesn't have to be a bad thing, right? You know, are there opportunities for you to work through some emotional issues on the home front and maybe some things that have that began brewing around um, the time of the new moon in in may you know maybe you're just in need of some some simple homely pleasures you know some some um some time with family sharing some good food that kind of thing maybe it's been too long since you've done that and regardless any some kind of issue that began you know, in this area of home and family and your roots and, and that kind of thing um, that began in the spring is reaching a culmination point with this full moon in Taurus. And, you know, the, the full moon energies, it's, it, you know, it's not just on the day kind of thing. You may feel them a little bit before and a little bit after as well. Okay, moving on to Capricorn. <clears throat> I'm really trying hard not to have a coughing fit right now. Sorry. Um, Capricorn, this is happening in your fifth house of children. Again, it's children, your own children or children you work with or are associated with. It's also your inner child, right? It's um, your creative spirit, um, how you express yourself creatively, right? Your, it could be your hobbies and interests. Um, also things you do for fun, romance, that kind of thing. All falls in this fifth house. And so have there been some tensions in that area of life? Maybe something began in the spring in this area and you've been working through that uh, since then. And, and now whatever it is, is reaching this turning point or culmination, right? Or illumination of some sort, or maybe getting closure there. So maybe um, things like, you know, maybe you, your partner, you and your partner have been sort of disagreeing on how to deal with the kids. This is just one real life example, perhaps. And, um, you know, this is a, a time when maybe you're going to reach some agreement or get some closure there, you know, get on the same page kind of thing. And maybe that will come about in some unexpected way, perhaps with Uranus involved, right? Um, maybe there is some kind of, uh, you know, around the time of the new moon in the spring, maybe you, you started some creative project or you were, you were thinking about some creative project. Well, now's the time for that to culminate, right? Uh, maybe time to put it out there, time to announce it, time to reveal it, those, those kinds of things. Um, and it's kind of a time to just take things to the next level in that, in that fifth house area. 
So um, take a look back to May, see what was transpiring in that area of life, and then, you know, see where things are at now for you. Moving on to Sagittarius. Sag, this is happening in your sixth house. And, you know, that's the daily grind, right? Our work routine, our day-to-day -day routines, um, our health and wellness habits and routines, our, um, how we serve others on the day-to-day -day as well, you know, how we help, how we serve. So maybe, maybe the daily grind has been getting under your skin in a big way, Sag. Um, you know, maybe something transpired in the spring that is now reaching a turning point or culmination point in that area of life. You know, maybe something in that area of life has been sort of crushing your vibe, right? Your normally optimistic vibe. And um, this is a time to shift that. And it may be in some kind of unexpected or surprising way as well. Um, you know, there may be some twists and turns in that area of life in terms of the daily, you know, the day-to-day -day kind of thing. Work routines and, and daily routines may happen right now, but it, that may like ultimately be for the better. So just try to, again, use that Saturn energy, you know, grounded, practical, um, emotionally mature kind of approach to, to work through that. And I just want to say, keep the faith, right? You're good at that. You're, you're generally quite optimistic. So keep the faith. This too shall pass. Um, this might also be, if you started some kind of health routine or wellness or, you know, treatment, I don't know, um, back in the spring, you may be getting the results now, seeing the results, right? Happen. That might be coming to maybe getting some closure there in some way. Um, and maybe that, you know, maybe it's not even what you expected, but again, that doesn't have to be a bad thing. So Scorpio, this is happening for you in your seventh house of one-to-one -one partnerships, contractual relationships, right? Um, business partnerships, that kind of thing. And I always mention to people, I know not everybody talks about this in terms of the seventh seventh house but this is also can be rivalries like known rivalries that we have with people who who may not be on our team kind of thing right um so there may be some plot twists uh, you know in this area and maybe back in the spring something started to transpire there um, you know, in terms of your one-to-one -one relationships and now reaching a culmination point, right? Um, or getting some closure or moving it to the next level kind of thing. So again, you know, this is, Taurus is a fixed earth sign. You are a fixed water sign. So there can be some stubbornness there and there can be some difficulty releasing or letting go of the emotional attachment to maybe, um, what we expected or how we wanted things to go, right? We know, we know you love to be in control, um, Scorpio. So, you know, now's the time to kind of um, recognize that whatever wants to, to change or whatever has been changing here is, is ultimately for the best, right? So there may be an opportunity here to, to relate in a different way as well. And stay curious, not, not rigid right? And use that Saturn energy to just be grounded and practical about, about everything um, in this area of life. So if you look back to May, how have your close partnerships evolved since then? And, uh, you know, what, what's next? What's, what's next on the agenda kind of thing in that, in that regard? Maybe, you're realizing you've really come a long way and it's a, it's a cause for celebration now, right? And, um, and getting some closure there. So Scorpio, that's you. Um, also Scorpio, happy birthday, because by the time I do this video, the sun will have moved into your sign. So happy birthday, Scorpio. Scorpio season is my favorite. I love it. Um, so cause for celebration for sure. Moving on to Libra. Libra, this is happening in the area of your chart that has to do with your, 
pardon me, your intimate relationships, right? Um, so that can have to do with anything you share with somebody else. So your resources, your money, um, you know, mortgages, taxes, insurance, wills, um, you know, this can be like your intimate sexual relationships as well. Um, this can have to do with any hidden secrets or hidden knowledge as well. That's that area of life. And, and like psychological probing, right? Um, like psychotherapy would fall in this area of, of the chart. So over these last months since the new moon in Taurus, you've, you've likely been sort of looking at, you know, what you need versus what the other, other needs, right? And um, that may be highlighted at this time. Maybe something started back then where, I don't know, like a merging of, of money maybe or a new way to, to do finances with your partner. Um, or maybe you started therapy back then. I don't know. I'm just, these are just some examples. And now you're, you're seeing the, the, the fruits of your labor now perhaps, or you're reaching a turning point or a culmination at this point in that area. So, you know, what I also want to say to you, Libra, is, you know, obviously your specialty is, is looking at things, um, from all sides. Right. And so are you doing the Libra thing and keeping it fair? which may be exactly what's needed, but just be mindful of the fact that fair doesn't necessarily always mean equal, right? And sometimes that can trip Libra up, I know. But, um, you know, just keep in mind what, or, or look back to what was happening in May in this area of life and see where you're at now. And um, you may have some kind of revelation, maybe you hadn't really even thought about it. And when you look back on it, you go, oh, yeah, wow, like that a lot of has transpired, right? What's the next move now? Um, and maybe it's not necessarily, again, perhaps it's not what you expected, but um, it, it's what wants to happen. All right, so that's Libra, and I'm going to move on to Virgo now. And Virgo, this is happening in your ninth house of your philosophy and your worldview and your belief system. Um, this has to do with teaching and learning and um, also, you know, ideas of justice and has to do with long distance travel and foreign cultures and what we can learn from from that. So it's really interesting because I'm a Virgo rising and um, I had had not looked forward in the astrology in terms of this full moon. But, you know, this trip to Boston sort of perfect timing right it, it's kind of and it wasn't intended it's sort of the way things worked out and so this um it can be a really good time right now for virgos to have a vacation that they can um that can expand their horizons and maybe shift their perspective and maybe they can learn something or maybe it's they're going on a trip to teach a course or something like that it could be happening right now um you know sort of digging deep into this area of your life too can be favored. Um, and it may happen in a way that you, you hadn't really expected even. Um, so like I said, there's an opportunity for travel. Maybe back in the spring, you began some course of study and now you're reaching a culmination point. Or maybe back in the spring, you were thinking about going on a trip and now you're actually, you know, going. Or maybe you're booking the tickets or something like that. Um, you know, there may be some plot twists as far as this goes. So I'm I'm kind of on the edge of my seat um, and you'll find out in the next video or, or if you follow on Facebook and Instagram and, and get the updates while we're away, you know, I'm kind of like, hmm, so I wonder what interesting things are going to happen, right? In terms of Uranus's involvement here with this full moon. So that should be interesting. I'll keep you posted. But, um, you know, something that was seated around the time of the new moon in May is now coming to fruition in some way. 
in this ninth house area. Okay, Leo, moving on to you. So Leo, the 10th house is where this is happening for you. And this is the house of your, your career, not your day-to-day -day work tasks, your career, right? And your public reputation, um, public persona, um, your aspirations as well, right? And there may have been some stuff to work out since May. Um, maybe something began, something new began, something was seeded in this area of life in in May, and now it's coming to to fruition or closure or reaching the next level, um, being illuminated, that kind of thing, right? And there may have been some some sort of tension between career and home life, and perhaps even trying to kind of juggle it all, right? And there might be emotions have, may have been running high um, due to all of that. And it's really good to, to strike a balance there and realize that it's, it, it doesn't have to be all or nothing kind of thing. And so again, if you look back to May, think about where things were at for you in this area of life and what has transpired up until now. And perhaps there's cause for celebration, right? And perhaps things were not, you know, perhaps they didn't go the way you expected, or um, there may be some some surprises or plot twists, and and that's okay. Um, you know, Leo, it is what's meant to happen, right? And use that Saturn energy to just keep you grounded and uh, look at the long range, look at the long view from here. Okay, moving on to Cancer. Cancer, this is happening in your 11th house of your friendships and any groups or clubs or associations that you're involved with. And that can be online as well. Um, and it's also the house that deals with our, our sort of hopes and dreams for the, for the future, our, our vision for the future, right? Um, and so, Cancer, there may have been something that transpired in this area that began in May in some kind of organization or friendship group, you know, um, and now it's reaching a culmination point. And, you know, maybe there's been some tension um, or something in, in friendship groups and you're feeling a little bit like, who's my tribe? Or, um, you know, who's on who's on my side? Or you know, feeling maybe a bit of lack of support even. And, and so with this full moon, there will be some kind of culmination there. Some, some turning point will be reached and maybe even some surprise, like, you know, some new person may turn up that you end up being really good friends with that you didn't necessarily expect or somebody, you may, you may find yourself, um, landing among people and feeling comfortable that you didn't necessarily expect as well and that's that's all good right um so so think again think back to to may what was happening in this area of life and where things are at now okay moving on gemini um you're last but not least in this case because this is happening in your 12th house and so that's the house of your inner world right and um, of, of like solitude and alone time and our, our unconscious habits and behaviors and perhaps where we self-sabotage. Um, it's also our relationship to the spiritual world, our spirituality, our higher power, right? Also our, 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 sort, of, our sort of hidden or, or unrecognized talents, like where we may have strength that we don't really see ourselves um also this can have to do with you've heard me mention before you know places of confinement so um long-term care uh you know prisons uh, those kinds of facilities right so gemini have you been overdoing it maybe since since the spring 
And now you just need some, you need to retreat a bit. You need some solitude and some alone time and you need a break. Um, you know, you're trying to be too many things to too many people or, um, are you feeling isolated in some way? And, you know, there's been a lot going bubbling up under the surface, or maybe you've been lost in, in a bit of a unhealthy escape escapism or self-sabotage that kind of thing um you know it's a time where whatever began in around may in that area of life is looking for release now for culmination to be addressed um for closure and it's important to Look after your inner world right now, right? You, you may have been focusing a lot on sort of like the external chaos um, or the, perhaps even the internal chaos. And, and, and now it's a time to focus on getting right with yourself, um, you know, some self-care and uh, some solitude and some addressing, uh, whatever needs addressing in that area of life. And, um, and maybe you've come a long way since May in that department and it's, it's cause for celebration, right? As well. So that is the full moon in Taurus through all 12 signs. And I hope you find it helpful. And again, you know, listen for your rising sign, your sun sign and your moon sign, because that will give added layers of information. And the next time I speak with you, I will be back from our trip and, um, it will be Halloween, so I will talk to you then, and I hope that you have um, a really interesting, in a good way, full moon in Taurus. Okay, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.